Welcome back to Philippines Uncut. I'm Buddy Kunan. And tonight's topic is Kawayan, the ideal city of the north. And joining me is the dynamic mayor of Kawayan City, Mayor Bernard D. Thank mayor you. D, Thank you. welcome <laughs> to our second segment. Thank you again. Glad and, uh, to be here. I have to say that my, my introduction, when I say dynamic, I mean that. And then, that's not a, a, a raw accolade. That mm. really is, I mean, coming from what you said in the first segment and all, your, and all the activities you're doing in Kawayan. Really, really. This is really dynamism in local government. So, thank you, thank okay. You. Um, I understand that you have your, okay, we talked about how your city has rolled out the mm -hmm. first city ID mm -hmm. in Isabela and right. possibly one, one of the first in the entire Philippines. Hopefully, no? hopefully, hopefully. If the national government sees it or the other <laughs> cities yeah. they take their see cue. it. Yeah. Yeah. Then they and uh, you have a sample of that yeah, idea yeah, yeah. with you so we can show um, the viewers what every resident of Kauaian right. has access to. So yeah. I'm going to hold it up. It's a very beautiful ID okay. and uh, as you said, Mayor, there is a... Uh, Okay. So the features start with our zip code, okay. just so uh, when the national government uh, decides to, to implement the national ID system, this will not be put into waste. Yes. So, so I can, as you can see, the yeah. zip code is there. The zip and code is there, and then uh, the year that was taken, and then it's a barangay code. 01 is barangay, and then the number. So it has your, of course, your, your address, details, and everything, uh, but also... Uh, on there's there's uh, on the bottom side on the bottom yeah, yeah. side yeah. it is being covered by your your finger but uh, it would say also if you're an indigent if you're a senior citizen wow. if you're a government official or employee so there's a lot of perks also that will be of course of course yeah yes. so it's just the initial initial uh, launching uh, that gives priority access to health and uh, health and healthcare services priority access to employment education uh, education also well it's free na man, eh. but mm. uh, it's more. It's more of um, giving them uh, pride to, to, to be a Kawayan. Did you encounter any, let's say, opposition or obstacles to rolling this out? No. I mean, no were man. people skeptical? Were people saying, hey, "Okay, what's this ID? I mean, are we being uh, kept track of now? Whatever, like that." Were there issues like that? No, appar uh, no. Apparently not. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, haven't, I haven't. I don't know. I don't know if uh, it'll come soon, but. Uh, so far, so good. Uh, people are very happy to have it because, uh, like what I said earlier, they can see the benefits already, especially those really less fortunate yeah. who had never had an ID in their entire lives. All of a sudden, they, they have a free ID. It's free, first of all. Of course, it, you know, everybody would get. And same time, you know, now that they can be, they can say that they have a government-recognized sure. uh, um, ID. So I think... Uh, you know, and... and, and, and and also as a citizen, you know, for safety and security. Right. At right. least, you know, if someone holds that, you know that this person is really a bona fide resident and right. he, he, he is recognized by the city or municipality. Correct. And even for safety and security, you know, in, 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 in this era of terrorism and things like that, mm. it's good for citizens to have an ID. Right. You know, so Later I, on, we'll have features also to, yeah. you know, uh, like in the States, if you want to be a, a donor, you know, organ sure, donor. Sure, sure. Organ like donor. That. I mean, there's yes, so many yes. possibilities yes, uh, that... Yes. that uh, that can be that's in store. And it's free. It's free. Oh, yeah. sayang. I, I, I wish it was a Republic of Kauaian. <laughs> <laughs> I want to migrate there. <laughs> okay. Right, now, okay. Right. Um, you know, it's it's very inspiring, really, your leadership. And um, you know, as we saw in the video that we played just before we ended the first segment, mm. there really is a lot of partnership between private business and private sector and mm. the local government right, in Kauaian. Right. And what is? How did you bring this about? How did you make this synergy happen? One of the first things that I did uh, during my, I think, um, in, you know, in the middle of my 100, first 100 years is to, to gather all the businessmen, my local businessmen, and to throw, up, uh, to throw out the first uh, private-public partnership co uh, summit. And my main, my main agenda with them is that uh, there are a lot of income-generating projects that are normally uh, undertaken by the local government, but this time I want to leave it up to them, to the local businessmen, instead of me going outside Kawaiian, the source funding, the source funding, and and then get it from other businessmen around the the country or even internationally. Why not start out with my local businessmen? Makes because sense. since they're Makes very sense. familiar with the terrain, yes. they're very familiar with one another. So instead of me asking people to come and you know, why not them? So I've I've um, I've uh, given them a list of all the possible income generating projects that they can fund. At the same time, I'll be saving what the money I'll be saving for that can be thrown into other social services such as ID, such as strengthening my rescue 922, such as those things. So uh, I think that our, my local businessmen 
uh, really uh, appreciated that, that effort and I've been getting, right after that meeting I got uh, donations of three, uh, you know, police, uh, <laughs> police detachment units. I had two police patrol cars. So uh, it's, 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 good, it's a good engagement uh, between uh, the LGU and business sector. For sure. And, and you know, <clears throat> it's good that um, you're, you're tapping these local guys because they should benefit also from opportunities. Yeah, certainly the it's living them there that will be fir first yes, benefited yes, by all course. these things. Rather than get some outsider, right. let, let your constituents benefit first, no? right. if, if they can, no? Right, if, right. if they can. Now, interesting you should say this, that about how they, they donated things like that and then uh, police cars and things like that. And, right. and, and really, that is the way to go because I don't think government can handle everything by itself. Yeah, and yeah, the uh, private sector has got to help out. Right, right. right. Uh, it's government have, has very limited resources and at the same time, you know, uh, I don't know of any government official or any uh, chief executive that would say he can do everything, you know, without the help of, uh, of, of, of the uh, private sector. So. I think it's really just stopping the private sector to know what the needs of the city are. Yes. I think that in little sense can, can go a lot of way. You know, you know Mr. Mayor, it, it's really amazing that when you think outside the box mm. and you think creatively, there's really a lot of things you guys in local government can accomplish. Yeah, right, right, because, right. you know, for the longest time, the mentality has been like, okay, we're government, this is what we're going to do. We're separate from business. We do our own thing. You do right. our own thing. But in your case, it looks like you've created a synergy, you know, right, between right. business and 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 and, and government. Right. I think that it, it could be, it, it it could have a lot to do with your background yeah, coming from the NGOs. Certainly no? think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Mayor, but NGO work has a lot to do with inclusive, inclusive yes. development, inclusive activities. Getting no? as much partners <laughs> as you can. <laughs> of course, right, of right, course, funding, so, yeah. funding. For example, if you have a project. Right, and it, it seems like, where am I going to get funding for this? Mm. So you, you have to go out and get <laughs> and, and, and I think the, um, it's not only that you know you have uh, partners in actually implementing projects, but also for sustainability. Course, as local, yes. as politicians, as uh, chief executives, in in our society or in our country, you know, it's it's so hard to get continuity. If there's a change of form of it, it, if there's a change of administration all the projects and programs will be put into waste. But if you have partners, <laughs> oh, yes. if you have institutional partners, regardless of who sits after you, it will continue. Hindi masasayang yung projects. Alam mo, Mr. Mayor, yung sakat ng Pilipino, eh, I, I, I'm unfortunately, right, our, our politicians, right, yeah. excluding present company accepted, of course. Right, right, but right. let's say, you know, unfortunately, this country, as you said very rightly, when there's a, a change in government, change in political uh, leadership, yeah. you know, all, all, all projects. Put, yeah, all, all that Maybe it may be good. Yeah. Most of them are good project, <laughs> but just because <laughs> there's uh, another government, then you just scrap it. So just imagine the amount of money, the amount of taxpayers' of money that and was effort, wasted. Time, effort, and time. Yes. You know. So that's that's a sad reality of the economic, uh, the political landscape in our country. But in your case, you've engaged business, so there is ownership from yeah, the private sector. Correct. So the next guy has to play ball with this I mean, because yeah. the, the institutions have been put in place already. Right. The systems are in place. You institutionalize no? all the projects. Excellent. So that's, I think, the goal of, of, of my, my, my administration. How accessible are you as a local chief executive? Oh, I'm very, very accessible. <laughs> no, I don't even have a gate in my house, so people can just go anytime. If they want to kidnap me, they can just oh, no, go, no. actually. Oh, no, no, no. about but that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, my family's been like that. So, it, you know, it was not just me. It's my, actually, my, from my grandfather to my father, you know, to... To me, uh, I think the people has been, um, they've just got used to it, that, that they can approach us anytime, they can call us anytime, they can text anytime. Um, that's just how we grew up. Yes, and, and very good because a lot of politicians in the Philippines and, and all over the world for that matter, no? Mm. There's a cordon sanitaire, well, there's mm. a cor there usually is a cordon sanitaire around them, you right, know, right. A, a, a layer of people that right. you have to go through, or right. several layers before you reach the mayor. Right. But in your case, I mean, businessmen or local people can call you or could go to your office. Yeah, and anybody, anybody. You have an open door matter. policy. Yeah. Excellent. And how is this? Even my house, <laughs> <laughs> not just the office. No. And, and, and how has this affected your leadership style? Well, um, it, you know, I have to be honest, I'm also human, you know, I get burnt out as well. Sure, uh, sure. You, you can't answer the you know, problems of all your constituents. You're not Superman and you're not an encyclopedia that has the answers. But, you know, at the end of the day, uh, as long as you're able to hear them out, as long as you're able to at least do something, uh, maybe, you know, make, 
even if it doesn't solve their problem, but as long as you've heard them, I think uh, that's enough for these guys to, to really um, appreciate the, what you're doing as a leader. Okay. Um, in that video we saw in the first segment, where we, before we, we stopped for our break, there was a very interesting um, part there where it showed these guys in, in uniform. Mm. And it said Rescue 922. And you mentioned that right, in the right, second right. segment. What is Rescue 922? Rescue 922 is our, um, our response team, emergency response team. Um, right now, it's very, all, all local government units has, have to have uh, disaster preparedness, the s municipal disaster preparedness or city disaster preparedness. And our Rescue 922, which was conceived by my late father uh, during uh, 2010, it's called 922, not because of Rescue 911, <laughs> but 922 is September that. 22. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's his birthday. That's why it's 922. It just so happened that you know, it's closely associated to 911. But um, during that time, the, the DRMC, or the National Disaster Risk, has not yet been fully implemented. But it was an initiative of my dad, or the local chief executive at that time, to really infuse uh, funding for this. And that is why ever since then, until now, uh, our Rescue 922 has been... Uh, the top of uh, the whole entire country of uh, an awardee of uh, Gawad Kalasag. It's called Gawad Kalasag yeah, Award. Okay. That's, been, that's being given by uh, the National Disaster Risk Reduction um, Committee. What is this award about? Uh, this, this is award. Gawad this award is, yeah, is uh, efficiency, competence on the disaster preparedness. Wow. Because uh, not only are they uh, efficient in, uh, in, in response time when there's uh, an accident or a calamity, but also they go out and train barangays and even neighboring towns, even as far as uh, Visayas and Mindanao, they go and train uh, wow. the other okay. rescue units of uh, other LGUs. So it has gone so far already that um, I'm just very happy that you know, uh, we're able to share uh, all the experience and expertise that, that these guys have. How big is the unit? Uh, it composed about 50, 50 people. And full time. This full is a time. Full they time. Three shifts. This is a full time uh, disaster, emergency disaster response yes, unit. Wow. Yes, they're complete. Uh, we have about uh, seven ambulances. We have about two that's like the states. That's an ICU type wow. already. We have a fire truck. They have, <laughs> you know, it's it's really amazing. It's <laughs> amazing. Yeah. I mean, for a um, city like ours, yes, we're, of course, we're of top course. Of, we're on top of the country. Of we're course. we're so far from the metropolis, but we still uh, we're able to get such service. Yeah, because you know, here in the here in Manila, whenever we're hit by a you know disaster, a typhoon, a flood like that, you know, these kind of services seem to be lacking, no? Yeah. But at least in your city, ha have these guys been through, put through their pace? Have they oh, been yeah. tested in so in So many times. So many times. What, what kind of disasters uh, have they? Uh, even addressed? even not just in Kauaian, but even calamities that that hit us. Uh, the first that hit us big was San Juan, uh, the typhoon Juan, uh, but that hit the eastern seaboard, all the coastal areas. It's similar to Yolanda, but this time. Uh, the Yolanda strength yeah. uh, was similar, yes. but it, it was in our coastal area, so not, not a lot of people were, were hit. But in Yolanda, we sent these, these guys, we sent them in uh, Sendong as well. So wow. even as far as Mindanao, we sent them. And Where does funding come from? The local uh, mayor's office. And in, in partnership with the uh, private sector, you, private you mentioned sector, that they have yeah. contributed to, to, to supplying some equipment right, and things like right, that. Right, right, right. Okay. So, you know, partnership is not bad. <laughs> no, 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 no. V very <laughs> impressive. And in fact, I mean, this is something that should be replicated. I mean, right. the Philippines has been uh, rated by the UN as one of the most threatened no? right, right. <laughs> countries in the world. Especially now, I think it's very timely that yes. people will have to really consider partnership or doing partnership uh, in a whole different level. Uh, two months from now, we will be experiencing, uh, or we will be coming into a new era of uh, whether it become leadership or <laughs> governance or e economy you're because of the AFTA. Yes, you're talking about the AEC, the ASEAN yeah. Economic Community, no? Yes, yes, and, uh, yes, yes, because of the ASEAN Free Trade Agreement, ev there's going to be a different ballgame. Uh, Actually, Mayor, hold that thought because I want to talk about that and how you're bringing Kauai into the world okay. when Philippines Uncut turns. Stay tuned.